Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Smart. Today we are doing uh, part two of counter for retaining wall design. In the last video, we have just input our data in these cells, and we we have find the depth of the foundation in each cell sizes. Check for the stability we have done. Check for the soil pressure below the footing and stability check again the sliding we have already done. In this part, we will design the toe slab. We will design the heel slab. We will design the vertical stem, and finally the counter foot. We will design by this sheet, right? So this is the detailing part. You will get to know how the detailing will come out. So let's start quickly. We will review what we have done in the last video, last part. Six point eight is our depth of the wall height. Unit weight is eighteen kilo newton per meter cube. Just you have to put your data. That data should be accurate or correct, right? Angle of intersection is thirty degree. QA is uh, soil bearing capacity is one seventy. Mu is uh, zero point six in our case. FCK we have to design for M twenty five. This is M twenty five and FE four one five, right? So we will see in the depth of the determine the depth of the foundation comes out to be 1.05. We have taken 1.20. You, you can take according to your requirement. So counter foot spacing, spacing between the counter foot, it comes out by this formula 2.26 or 3.39. We have chosen three. So thickness of the counter foot has been come out. Thickness of the base slab is 480 mm come out, and uh, width of the footing comes between this 4.80 to 4.5.60. We have chosen five. Now all the initial sizes like toe projection 1.25, 1.25, vertical stem thickness is 200 mm, and the height of the stem is 7520 come out right. So calculate the forces has been calculated and as well as the moment has been calculated. In the last video we have explained in detail. Submission W, all the weights W1, W2, W3, and the moment about A that is toe. Has been calculated. Calculate of the earth pressure has been calculated. Check for the stability already been done. It is greater than 1.4, so hence it is safe. Check for the soil pressure is safe, and the check for stability against sliding is 1.63. It is also greater than 1.4. It is safe against sliding and no shear. K is required. So design of shear is not required in this case, right? So now uh, in this part, part two, we will design the toe slab and we will in detail. We will. Explain in detail, right? So pressure due to the self weight of the base slab. We are designing the toe slab, right? Next is the toe slab. We are designing the pressure due to the self weight of this toe slab. So thickness of the base slab that is 480 multiplied by the density of the concrete that comes out to be 4 kN per meter square, and uh, that is Q3. So Q max and Q minimum we have already find out in this video. 165 and 65 is the Q minimum. Right, Q max and Q minimum. So we have to find the Q3 at this point. Uh, the Q3 is comes out to be 140 by the formula, right? And Q4 comes out to be 136 by this formula. Q max minus Q max minus Q minimum divided by total B into distance from the toe. It has been calculated accurately. So net pressure is pressure due to the sulfate minus gauss pressure at the base. So this is a pressure diagram, and this is the net pressure diagram. So how it will be calculated? It will be calculated by uh, this Q max minus this 12. So it is P max is 153, P3, P3 is 128 because this is 140 minus 12, 128, and uh, down it will be in upward direction, and P4 10.88, right? How it is calculated? This is 147. Okay, this is the heel slab. We will talk in later, right? So we have calculated the Q max, Q3, and this part has been calculated P max and P3, right? So assume the bar dia. If we are assuming 16 mm dia and clear cover is 75 mm in case of the toe slab because it touches the soil, so 75 mm minimum clear cover should be there, right? So effective depth is calculated. Because this is 480 minus clear cover minus d by 2, right? So 397 is effective depth. B 1000 mm for which we are designing 
VU is calculated shear force by this formula P max plus P3 this is P max this is P3 into tow length minus effective depth this is uh, from the column the phase capital D distance should be the maximum for shear strength so 180 km per meter is the shear strength bending moment has been calculated by this formula 169 so PT is required percent is of PT is 0.32 so AST required is this much so if we have chosen 16 mm so 160 mm center to center has been calculated for the toe slab main reinforcement and distribution is uh, minimum reinforcement is 0.12 percent so if we choose a uh, 10 mm dia so 10 mm 130 mm center to center so if we see in the diagram so this is toe we have designed the toe so at from the bottom the pressure will be maximum at the toe because there is no upward soil so it will be the maximum pressure from the bottom so the main improvement should be placed in the bottom so 16 dia 160 mm which has been calculated will be on the bottom and the minimum reinforcement 10 into 130 mm center center both side this green portion is distribution steel right so next is your heel slab toe slab has been done design heel slab same the heel slab will be done the sulfate of the base slab 12 km per meter square and in the base in the heel slab there is also a soil pressure will be there so h backfill h backfill is uh, the total height h backfill is total height this much is the height for the soil and uh, the density of the soil is 18 we have already so it has been calculated total sulfate has been calculated p4 and p5 p minimum by the same which we have already done so this is q4 already calculated 136 minus the this much total weight soil plus base slab 147 this comes out to be 10.88 and p minimum this comes out to be 81 so if you minus 147 minus q minimum that is 65 it comes out to be 81 right so p4 and p minimum is calculated if you assume the size 16 mm again and clear cover is 75 mm in case of heel slab effective depth is calculated this much is this now the point is that due to the pressure of the counterfort heel slab will act as continuous beam so this heel slab will act as continuous beam because of the support at mid this point right so uh, as per is456 for the support at the support mu is wl square by 12 minus this is at the support and the interior support right and for the, at the mid span if you finding the bending moment at the mid span you have to multiply by the coefficient at 1 by 16 that is w l square by 16 so w a is the uh, w a is the we can take the average this is p4 plus p minimum by 2 that is comes out to be 46 46 and l effective is and the distance is 3 meter and this much is uh, the effective depth 397 3.397 is the effective length right so maximum factored negative bending moment by this is 1.5 multiplied by this much this comes out to be 66.54 and maximum factored bending moment at the middle of the heel slab middle of the heel slab this is multiplied by 1.5 this comes out to be this much so maximum of these we have taken for the design so it comes out to be 0.12% AST required has been calculated, spacing is required calculated, so 16 mm by 420 mm center to center is to be provided in the heel slab and the maximum pressure of the soil comes in the top portion, so the main reinforcement will be provided in the top portion and for the distribution is still the same minimum reinforcement, so 10 130 mm center to center. Development length, this comes out to development length for which 978 978 mm will be this is the heel slab the main enforcement 16 mm 420 mm center to center and this will go through this much distance that is this much that is the uh, your 978 mm development length right so next is the vertical stem assume the bar dia so we are designing the vertical stem so vertical stem you can take the minimum mm, less dia lesser dia if you are assuming a 12 mm dia and clear cover you can take because it is not 
the same as the foundation so we can take the 50 mm clear cover so effective that comes out 144 effective length is this is 3 meter clear span 0.14 3.14 h dash is 7.52 ka we have already calculated pa at the bottom the maximum pressure will be there so this comes out to be by this formula 45 w the factored we can do 67.68 and the same the vertical stem will also this this is the vertical stem we go so the counter fold will act as the support so it will also act, act as a continuous beam right the so same formula for the negative bending moment this is wl square by 12 l effective square by 12 this is comes out to 55 for the mid span this much comes out to be these are the moments at the mid span and the, at the support so we will check the stem for design shear force also because it is important to check for the shear force that the thickness we have provided 200 mm is enough or not so in this case vu have been calculated by this formula w clear span by 2 minus d this comes out to be 91.77 kN per meter so nominal stress is 0.637 it is much more than 0.5 right so we have to increase the depth greater than 0.4 or 0.5 right so if it comes out to be 0.637 so we have to increase the depth or thickness by 300 mm if we take so this nominal stress comes out to be 0.376 so it is under safe so d effective now the d effective has been changed the capital d becomes 300 is this much clear cover 50 mm and and this much is the assumed dia bar so 244 mm is the effective depth so at the support pt required comes out to be 0.27 because we have already calculated the moments so ast required now you have to take d effective depth in this much so maximum of these two effect maximum moment so we will calculate the pt required so ast required is been calculated if we assume the 12 mm dia so 12 mm 170 mm center to center next step is step 12 design of stem for cantilever action there will be a cantilever action also due to the counter foot so if we assume consider triangular load on the stem to be carried by the cantilever action intensity of horizontal pressure at the base at the base we have already calculated by this formula ks gamma s h dash this comes out to be 45 and at the distance of 1.5 meter above the soil if we calculate it then the pa is 36.12 so mu is been calculated total bending moment due to the triangular load portion is this much triangular load portion is this portion if we want to calculate the total movement it comes out to be 66 this is the pt required ast required if we assume again dia to be 12 m so 120 m 140 m center to center it has been come out right so we will see that we have find stem heel slab and toe slab the main reinforcement in case of the stamp this is 12 170 mm the main reinforcement in this horizontal direction in green portion and 12 140 mm center to center this is vertical that is the distribution steel so heel slab being designed this is the main reinforcement these are the distribution steel and toe slab this is the main reinforcement these are the distribution steel so we have done the stamp toe and heel now we will find the design of the counter fold so counter fold will act as a t beam wearing section cantilever from the base slab so this counter fold will act as a t beam this will act as a t beam because it is showing that the t beam action will be there so we will design it as a t beam so h dash is we have already calculated 7.52 bw is the thickness of the counter fold 300 mm clear spacing is 3000 mm so l1 is spacing t by 2 3 3 0 0 if we choose a clear cover of 50 mm and assume the bar dia as 25 mm so this much is the effective depth right 3 2 3 7.50 and earth pressure at the base stem is calculated factor bending moment is being calculated the formula is put up there right and the factor shear force is 839 now the AST required for the T beam is been calculated by this formula MU upon J into D into 0.7 into FI 
Now assume if you are assuming a dia to be 20 mm, so we have to provide the seven reinforcement in two rows, right? So this is the detailing part. So you have to provide these seven number of bars of 20 mm in two rows. This seven and again the seven rows in this form. So design of counterfold. Next is the shear reinforcement connection between the counterfold and the stem. There is a connection of counterfold and the stem is there. So you have to provide this horizontal reinforcement. That is a shear reinforcement. So you have to calculate the shear force already been calculated at 39. So Tobi is being calculated. Right, 0.86 AST at the support is 2198. So PT provided is 0.23. So by table 19, this is comes out between this 0.15 and 0.25. So these are the values already put up. So 0.351 is the TOSI value. So TOVI is greater than TOSI. Shear bars are required. So VUS is calculated by this formula for 98. If you assume 8 mm and 2 leg stirrup. So this much is the 2 let stirrups 8 mm 230 mm center to center in this portion right these green are 2 leg stirrups 8 mm 230 mm center to center check for tension same the tension is this by this formula 1.5 lateral pressure lateral pressure into the span length AST is required is T upon 0.87 so stirrup if you choose 10 mm 2 leg stirrup so 10 mm 250 mm at the center to center at the base the tension will be there so these are the syrup at the base the design of vertical ties these are the vertical ties so consider the one meter width near the end of the hill slab there will be the maximum pressure of the counterfoil. the maximum pressure will be at the one meter width so these being calculated p average by this formula this is comes out to be this much t is again 1.5 into pressure into span length this comes out so area of the steel required is this much so if we assume a bar dia of 8 mm so 2 leg stirrup so this much is 130 mm center to center if you assume 10 mm dia so 10 mm ties 200 mm center to center these vertical in blue this is 2 leg to 10 mm 200 mm center to center right so the balance is 2 leg 10 mm 300 mm center to center so this is the detailing part of the section through the counterfoil showing the reinforcement detail so this is the detail of reinforcement 7 bars are this much 20 mm dia 2 leg stirrup 300 mm center to center 2 leg stirrup 200 mm center to center and this is for the horizontal ties the connection between the vertical stem and the counterfoil and this is the top view we have already calculated all the details these are the these are the counter fort and this is and this is the vertical stem we are assuming from the top so friends we have designed the counter fort retaining wall if you change your data you will get the different design criteria so if you like this video if you want this excel sheet please contact me on my whatsapp number mail and thanks for watching and please subscribe this channel for more design videos